All right, so you've heard me talk about layers, you've heard me talk about networking models, and a word that I keep mentioning um, is packets. And I've mentioned packets a bunch of times, and you may be wondering, what are packets? Because I've never explained it. And so I'm, now we're going to explain what packets are and how important they are to how networks work. So in this video, we're gonna talk a little bit about the history of networks and both data and telecommunications or voice communication networks because as you might suspect, they use different technologies, but they're related because as voice technologies developed, things moved along and we got data networks to do different things and, and work a little bit differently. So we're gonna talk about the history specifically in terms of circuit switching and packet switching. So what are these two technologies? How do they work? How are they similar and different from each other? And then we'll talk about what makes packet switching so effective for data networks. And, the, and specifically when we're talking about data networks, we're talking about things like the internet that we see today because <clears throat> packet switching is how those networks work. So back a long, 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 long time ago, we had telephones and telephones, this was, and, and when I'm talking about telephones, I'm talking about, and when I say a long time ago, I'm talking about so far back in time that these telephones, if you'll notice this telephone here, doesn't have a dialer. There's nowhere on that telephone to dial. There's no rotary dial, which is old technology. There's no touch tone. None of that is there. All you had is a phone and you picked up the phone and you talked to an operator and the operator would say, how can I connect your call? And they would connect your call. And what that operator's job was, was to form a circuit or a dedicated full connection between you and your, whoever you were calling, whoever it was on the other end. <clears throat> well, that exact same technology is still in use today with some voice networks, obviously, we don't usually have auto, auto operators like this, and I don't know that there's anywhere in the world, well, there probably is somewhere in the world, but there aren't a lot of operators that still do this, have this job to sit in front of a switchboard and plug cables together to form circuits. But what that cable plugging is doing, it, when they would plug a cable in, what that was doing was forming a dedicated connection, a dedicated, a fully dedicated circuit between two phones and nobody else could use that circuit at the time. Nobody else could call in. You had the fully, the full connection all to yourselves between your two devices. And when that became unplugged, you no longer had a connection. You could no longer talk to the person on the other end of the phone. And circuit switching is great. And you can, you can have circuit switched data networks. Even today they exist. The, Benefits of a circuit switch data connection is that you have that dedicated exclusive connection, which means only the people who are on that connection can use it. Nobody else can use it. It's a direct connection, which means at the very least that you have consistent bandwidth and minimal delay, which means you're not bouncing things all over the world in unexpected or unpredictable ways. You know exactly the path that your data is taking across this network because it's going across that dedicated circuit and consistent bandwidth because you own the whole thing, minimal delay, meaning you don't have any, any unpredictable paths. You have consistent latency where you know exactly what path it's gonna take and how long it's gonna take to get there. Obviously, even data networks are limited by the speed of light. We cannot, as far as we know, send data anywhere faster than the speed of light. The speed of information is the speed of light. But you have minimal delay as much as is possible with those kinds of networks. Unfortunately, that comes with drawbacks. There are issues with circuit switch networks that really cannot be overcome with a circuit switch network. One is that it's expensive to have a dedicated connection just for you that you use 100% of or you own 100% of. That costs a lot of money and it takes time and, and effort and energy to, to set those up. Say, so, yeah, so, you know, it is what it is, it's expensive. Also, it's inefficient because odds are you're not using up 100% of that available bandwidth. You own all of the bandwidth, but you're probably not using all of it, which means that some of that is just sitting there not doing anything when in, 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 if you wanted to, you could do something with it or somebody else could do something with it if you had available capacity to send data there. And we'll talk about kind of where that all fits together. 
And then there's also a single point of failure. If you have a circuit between you and some destination, if that circuit gets broken, you can no longer communicate with the destination. That's a problem. Uh, we like to be able to communicate. In fact, that right there, that single point of failure is one of the reasons that packet switching and ARPANET and the internet and all of these things were created because we wanted redundancy. We wanted to be able to complete transmissions even when the path that we expect it to take is not necessarily available. So even if the one circuit gets broken, we have ways to get data from one place to another. And thus, packet switching was created. And packet switching was created to make the internet work. And like I said, it was created to overcome some of those issues. And it works by breaking a message into chunks. So you take a large message, an image or a movie or a piece of text, really anything, and break it up into chunks called packets. And those packets are then independently sent across the network. And this network can take a bunch of different forms and a bunch of different shapes. And every single one of those packets can take a different path. And I'll show you kind of what that might mean. <clears throat> Essentially, you could think of it like sending a book by, b through the mail by taking out each page, folding them up, putting them in individual envelopes, and then putting them in the mailbox. They may not all get to the destination at the same time. They may not all take the same route. Maybe some of them make it on the first truck of the day. Some of them don't make it on till the second truck of the day. And the second truck goes through Denver and the first truck goes through Cheyenne. I don't know. But there's different ways, that different paths that that stuff might take but each individual piece is still likely to make it to the end. And then at the end, you can take all the pages and you've got the page numbers and you can put them all together. And then you've got the book on the other side. And so that's kind of what packet switching is. Think of it like sending a book through the mail one page at a time. So what we have with this network, with this packet switch network, is we've got a whole bunch of devices, a whole bunch of networks, and, and each of these nodes, nodes A through H here, could each be a different router along the path. And you'll notice connections between the routers. So A is connected to D, E, and B. E is connected to everything else. Um, H is connected to G, E, and host two. And if host one wants to send a message that is green, blue, red from itself to host two, it splits up this message into packet green, packet blue, packet red. And we'll watch as the, the packets take their path through the network. And what you'll notice is the packets can each take a different route to their destination. They all have the same source, the same destination, but they don't all take the same path. And when they all get to the same destination at the end, like the pages of the book that we ripped up and mailed through the USPS, we have gotten all the messages, all the parts of the message, the packets to the destination where they are reassembled, put together into the original message. We've stitched up our book binding and now we've got the book at the destination. And all of those things could, can take a different path, which is awesome when it comes to fixing some of the issues that we might have with circuit switch networks. So what you're gonna see is better efficiency. You don't have a dedicated network that is sitting there mostly empty as you don't send a bazillion bytes of traffic from one host to another. You could have devices connected at each node along this path and they could all be sending messages each and every single way. And rather than having a thousand different dedicated circuits to get devices, to get data from one to another, we can have this more general purpose network where everything can share the same resources and things can be sent from one thing to another. And that's awesome. We also have greater redundancy and it, redundancy is critical. And ARPANET, the original packet switch network was created and the, the packet switching and all of this technology was created because we were concerned that our country was going to get nuked and we were going to not have a way to get data from one place to another. So if one of these links goes down, so let's say we cut the link between node D and node G right here. Well, obviously node D and node G can no longer directly communicate with each other, but they can still talk to each other because you can send data from D to E and from E to G. And similarly, cutting the node 
the the link between D and G, or also between E and G. If we cut both of these, that doesn't stop these devices from being able to communicate because we have multiple paths that we can take through the network, which improves that robustness. It gives us redundancy so that things can be taken down and a whole bunch of things can be taken down. And rather than having the entire network go down when one link goes down, we now have the ability to route around it and, and automatically find a new and better path or, or at least a new path to get from one place to another. So unfortunately, it does come with some drawbacks. It's not perfect. No solution is ever perfect. There's always going to be something missing. So one of them is latency. Like I said, one of the benefits of a circuit switch network is consistent and relatively low latency. You know how long it's going to take to get across the circuit because you know how long the circuit is. With a packet switch network, you don't necessarily know what path things are going to take. And so you're going to have both um, increased latency because you've got to take more hops and go more places, but also um, inconsistent latency because sometimes things are going to go one path, sometimes they're going to go another path. Sometimes two packets that are right next to each other might take two different paths like red, blue, and green did, and you're going to see things go a bunch of different directions. You also have an issue with dropped packets. So if part of the network gets too congested, it's just going to stop. It's going to stop sending things. Um, if a router's buffer is full and it can no longer accept packets, then it can no longer accept packets and the new packets that come in get dropped and they disappear. So you're going to lose something sometimes. And we'll talk about it, but there are protocols and things in place to, to fix that if it needs to be fixed. The reliability that we add at the transport layer allows us to fix the, some of the dropped packets and replace dropped packets if they need to be replaced. But the idea is, uh, you know, n nothing is without compromise. And so we lose some things, but thankfully, you know, we gain so much more by having this packet switch network and, and dropped packets from buffer overruns and things like, like it happens, but it's not a huge deal as you probably know, because most of the time when you get on the internet, your data gets where you want it to go. So excellent. Before we go, let's take a second to review. How is a circuit switched network different from a packet switch network? What is the difference between these two types of network? And what advantages does packet switching provide over having those dedicated circuits? You should be able to answer those questions. Almost everything we do in this class is going to be dealing with these packets. So it's important to understand what packets are and how they play into data communications.